Israel's attack paralyzed the production of ballistic missiles in Iran. The American portal Axios wrote about it. Israel's retaliatory strike against Iran disabled a critical component of Iran's ballistic missile development program, said the article with reference to three sources from Israel. It also says that Israel hit 12 planetary mixers that were used to produce solid rocket fuel for long-range ballistic missiles. According to the interlocutors of the portal, the affected objects are extremely complex equipment, which Iran does not produce, but orders abroad. The representative of the United States confirmed that the strike significantly weakened the missile potential of Iran. Restoration of production capacity may take no less than a year, since Iran is forced to buy such equipment in China, since it does not produce it on its own. In addition, limiting Iran's ability to produce new ballistic missiles will affect its support for allies such as Hezbollah and the Houthis. Israeli sources also reported that the attack hit four batteries of S-300 air defense systems that protected Tehran and its nuclear and energy facilities. The Iranian army in its statement confirmed that the attack took place from the airspace of Iraq and damaged several radar systems, but did not mention the loss of facilities engaged in the production of missiles or drones, emphasizing its right to respond. Israeli sources confirmed that the strikes were carried out from the airspace of Syria and Iraq, some of them near the border between Iraq and Iran. U.S. President Joe Biden noted that Israel's strikes were aimed only at military targets, and expressed the hope that this would put an end to the exchange of attacks between Israel and Iran. He also called to do everything possible to protect American troops and help Israel in case of possible retaliatory actions by Iran or its allies. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister of Qatar called on all parties to refrain from further escalation. The day before it became known that Israel struck Iran. Before that, the Iranian authorities, preparing for the expected counterattack from Israel, ordered the armed forces of the country to be ready for war. The military was instructed to develop several plans to respond to the Israeli attack. Israel's military released on Saturday footage of troops locating and destroying an strategic Hezbollah underground facility in southern Lebanon. The IDF said that the facility was over 1.5 kilometers long and stored equipment that enabled hundreds of militants to stay inside for extended periods of time. Israel has said it will continue to strike Hezbollah until it is safe for Israeli citizens displaced from their homes near the Lebanon border to return. Hezbollah has vowed to keep firing rockets into Israel until there is a ceasefire in Gaza. The health ministry in Beirut says the total toll over the past year is over 2,600 killed and 12,200 wounded. עוד קילומטר, עוד קילומטר בתצורה הזאת. של בירי יציאה, מצד אחד אפשר לראות. של מתחמים, כמו שראינו מתחמי לינה גדולים עם מיטות ומזרונים. מזרונים עם מיטות, עם תחמושת ביחד, מפגנים, ציוד לחימה, תירס, מרים. עוד מלא 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 דברים, אפשר גם לראות פה המון אמל"ח, עובד צלפים, עשרות רבות של תחמושות, אם לא מאות, מצעדים, מערכות יזימה. המטרה של המערכת התת-קרקעית הזאת, ובייחוד המתחמי שהייה האלה, היא בעצם אותם פעילים של חיזבאללה, של רדואן, להגיע מהכפרים הסמוכים, או מהכפר הזה, כאזרחים רגילים, על פניו, לבושים בבגדים אזרחיים, 
נכנסים למנהרה הזאת, למערכת התת-קרקעית הזאת, עולים פה על ציוד לחימה, על וסטים, נשקים קלים, נשקים כבדים, מקלעים, תחמושת, המנשאים שלהם, וברגע הפקודה יוצאים מהתקפה למדינת ישראל. זאת מערכת שהם בנו מעל 15 שנים, ועכשיו אנחנו פה, ואנחנו נשמיד את המנהרה הזאת. <תקודות> The president of Belarus, Alexander Lukashenko, in an interview with Russia's media Izvestia, has threatened war if Russia attempts to annex Belarus. You are smaller, we are larger, and we have this or that kind of economy. We will help you. And then joining Russia. This approach is unacceptable. It's impossible and unfeasible. I'm even afraid to say it, but that would mean war, he said. According to him, he doesn't understand why Belarus would need to be annexed by Russia as the two countries already cooperate within the Union state framework. We can build relations that are closer and stronger than in a unitary state, and no one will have any grievances. Lukashenko added, he called the idea of Belarus joining Russia a foolish task. This is not the Middle Ages, where you seize a territory, collect taxes, and all is well. The world has changed. It's different now. So, there's no need to set such foolish tasks, and one must always think about what comes next. Lukashenko clarified, Recall Vladimir Putin has compared himself to empire-building 18th-century Russian Tsar Peter the Great and has attempted to annex entire regions of Ukraine while declaring that he is returning historically Russian lands. A leaked document last year reportedly detailing Russian plans to absorb neighboring Belarus now provides further insight into the imperial ambitions that are also driving the invasion of Ukraine. It serves as a comprehensive guide to the unofficial annexation of Belarus via a combination of economic, military, political and social measures with the objective of full absorption into a so-called union state with Russia by 2030. The Russian takeover of Belarus as outlined in the document appears to closely mirror Moscow's plans for Ukraine, albeit by less direct means. Russia's goals with regard to Belarus are the same as with Ukraine, only in Belarus Russia relies on coercion rather than war. Its end goal is still wholesale incorporation, commented Michael Carpenter, the US ambassador to the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, following publication of the leaked document. The strategy document for Belarus envisions the comprehensive russification of Belarusian society, along with a sharp reduction in the influence of nationalist and pro-Western forces, which are viewed by Russia as virtually indistinguishable in relation to both Belarus and Ukraine. The Belarusian political, financial, business and education systems would be fully integrated into Russia with a network of pro-Russian media, NGOs and cultural institutions established to aid this integration process. In the military sphere, the Belarusian army would become de facto part of the Russian military, with Belarus increasing the number of Russian bases in the country and allowing Moscow to dramatically expand its military presence. 